seven, the New Zealand U Hoggett contest. It was quite a night, the presentation award dinner. Yes, we've been looking forward to this for a long time because it's it's the end of a long process to get a national winner. Um, we started this competition back in late February, early March in different areas of the country. And to go from district winners to regional winners to a national winner, with all the work that's involved with it, it takes a considerable amount of time and effort. And, and judges doing a lot of mileage. They, they do. Um, so that's my job as convener is to make sure that the judges get around the country, I do the driving. Organise the timetables, the itinerary, uh, the programme if we were going to be, when we are going to be there. So generally that takes about 4,000 kilometres over seven days on the road. And it's all voluntary stuff, isn't it? <laughs> now, uh, it is, and, and I think, so it should be, because I think that if you get to the stage where you have to pay people to do that, where well, you're not getting the right person. Better so these, these guys are, are totally passionate about what they're doing. So, so considering the hours that they spend, uh, uh, dark to dark, uh, no lunch breaks, I feel the sponsors get it. Good value for their money. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to talk about sponsors shortly, but in the meantime, how, how widespread have, are the flocks this year? Right, well, this year we travelled from Tauranga in the north to Riverton in, in the south. So historically, the strength of the competition has been in the lower part of the South Island, because that's where it originated from, the Southland West Otago Hogger competition. And 19 years ago, from memory, it went to a national system where we, we went outside the province to choose a national winner. And um, so we're still in very much a, a growth phase in the North, in the North Island, uh, trying to organise regional conveners and, and a more of a, a formal format uh, to, to gather those entries and do the judging process. So um, it, it really is a national competition. I mean, this year when it got to the stage of the finals, uh, we visited um, 19 flocks in the South Island and 10 in the, in the North Island. Right. So what's the criteria? What are, what are the judges looking for? Best overall u hoggets, most productive u hoggets in their lifetime, wherever they may be. And the points, uh, out of 100 points, 50 points go on production, the flock production. And that's the points have evolved over the years, so we have increased the portion of votes, or points rather, that go to production. 20% <coughs> of the marks go to the, uh, the phenotype of the animal, the actual physical confirmation and attributes of that animal and how they reflect the breed. 15 points on wool quality and another 15 on on the contestant's breeding objectives and selection criteria for, for what he's doing. So there's, your, there's 100 points. It's pretty complex and it's across a lot of breeds. Well that's the problem, um, not just across a lot of breeds, it's also, uh, if, you, if you can understand obviously, uh, a huge range of environmental uh, differences right throughout the country. So we have six, six breeds. We, we operate within the Coopworth Composites crossbreeds, Fine Wool, Perindale. Uh, and and uh, amongst all those other, and the Romneys, but, uh, but they're all uh, facing different environmental challenges. Mm, so mm. you've got that aspect plus the different breeds and awarding the points associated with those problems. Which is not easy for the judges, Stephen. It's not, it's not, but uh, to get a bit of compatibility or continuity rather into the process, we have three judges. So every year one will revolve off the judging panel and we'll introduce another one, uh, just to get a feel of what's required to, to get a winner. And despite all those changes and challenges that we have in front of us, it's ultimately the, the top flock basically picks itself because there's always one that's quite outstanding and you never know whether it's going to be the first flock you'll see or the last flock you're going to see. So you must put some sort of a, a baseline when you see your first flock and you say, okay, that's the benchmark. Mm. Everything else is either better or mm. inferior to it. Yeah, each judge has a different way of, of, of assessing the flocks. And it's interesting, actually, seven days on the road, um, there's very little uh, talk between them. They quietly go about and, and award their marks, and then when it comes to the final evening on tour, we sit down with the computer and, and calculator, mm -hmm. and that's when they start to divulge their points. And it's really quite interesting, because by and large, they're all in sync with each other. Might, some might be scoring higher and some lower, but in actual fact, they, they all pick the winner uh, together. Let's cut to the chase. Who are the, the, the section winners? The section winners this year, um, we've got the Coopers from Riverton, Graham and Raven Black, uh, we've got the composite winners from Wendon side, 
uh, north of Gore, uh, Beaven and Wendy Hopcroft. We have the crossbreds from the Otteries, Hamish and Sarah Ottery at Tapanui. The Perindales went to um, Ellen and Leanne Woodrow at uh, Waikana Matara. And by now you're thinking, hang on, this is very much a self and <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, excuse me, do you think north of the Waitaki? <laughs> and, and, um, and actually, I'll, I'll carry on with the, uh, the winners. The fine wool one came from Nine Mile Pastoral, which is a property owned by Gordon Lucas, a well-known uh, high country station in Terrace. And the Romneys went to um, Bevan and Prudence uh, Butler at Waipawa. Now, I'm, as a convener and wanting this competition to grow to a new level in the north, I'm always keen to get more prizes to the north, if we can, possibly can, which, mm. uh, which leads to more exposure. But however, the, the points just didn't allow it this year. Well, that was where the top flocks were. Exactly. And, and, and when you look at the score sheet, um, the judges got it right, and those winning flocks scored well where they had to. So you want to know the overall winner, of course. We'd better have a drum roll or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, please, who, who was the overall? The overall winner this year is Bevan and Wendy Hopcroft from Wendon side in Northern Southland. And was it a big margin or was it tight? Uh, it was by a couple of points. Yes, it was. It was, it, was, um, it was by a good margin, considering the standard of the flocks that were following in behind. Uh, very close. Um, and I guess the most pleasing thing about this is after you've been involved for a number of years, this, for example, this year, four, maybe five of those breed winners would have won it any other year previously. Mm. So that just indicates to me that the bar's continually rising. And um, so we're getting value out of the competition in that respect. Tell me about the sponsors, please. We've got a family of sponsors, really, and they all take an equal part. Um, we've got the Alliance Group. We have Countrywide uh, Magazine sponsoring as well. And so we get a lot of uh, articles in that, in that publication. A great publication. Uh, Mary Lanky have been a sponsor for a long time since it was first started. And True Test as well, uh, and Ravensdown. So they've been a family of sponsors for a long time. And um, it, it's. They're all it, great supporters of farming, aren't they? They are, they are. Yeah. Uh, and it must be difficult for them to, to justify a sponsorship and how. Do you, how do you uh, quantify the feedback or the monies, returns that they would expect? And it's. It's very, very difficult. Well, a good thing is that they're going to be, because of you, they're going to be on the On The Land website, so they'll get it from there. Well, that's good news <laughs> for them, exactly, and well done. <laughs> and of course, very, very briefly, it wasn't an easy season for anybody this year. No, it wasn't, no, no. Um, it's, it's either too flat, too steep, too dry, too wet. Um, but, uh, but what we've found out, or, or what I've observed over the years, is that no matter where these farmers are, it's the, the contestants that make the right decisions at the right time always succeed. So even though conditions are tough in their local area, they're always achieving well above the average or the normal. So that's uh, interesting. Stephen, thank you very much indeed.